So Rav Howie's criterion is actually used to determine the number of roots on the on the right hand side of the S plane. So once we know the roots on the right hand side of the S plane, then we know that this system is actually unstable. Also, this this method uh, enabled will enable us to find the roots al along the imaginary axis when when the system is actually uh, marginally stable. Uh, so when we arrange these uh, these coefficients of the characteristic equation, uh, we arrange them in a table or we call it a rough uh, array. So if we state this criteria, we can say that as uh, as we talked last time, uh, for there to be no roots with positive real part, then there is a necessary, as I said last week, there is a necessary but not sufficient condition that all the coefficient characteristic have same sign and non-zero. So once we have once we have a system, once we have a system which doesn't have positive real parts there are no roots uh, on the right hand side of the s plane and all the roots and all the signs of the characteristic equation the coefficient the coefficients have same sign and they are non zero they are they are non zero then it means this is a necessary condition for uh, this is a a necessary condition for stability but it's not sufficient as in when you see a system when you have a characteristic equation which have a coefficient with, with different signs let's say you have a characteristic equation let's say uh this squared minus 4s plus one then you will know automatically since they are they are of no same sign this is negative and this is positive and we have positive then you know automatically that system is not stable. But if you have a system which we have all we have all signs, we have two two s squared plus four s plus one, maybe is equals to zero. Then uh, we need to go further and check stability of the of the system. So that's why you say if the above is satisfied, the necessary condition for stability is. All coefficient of the first column of roof array have same sign, and this and the change of signs uh, in in that column I'll, I'll show you in that column means those are the actually the number of roots on the right hand side of the on the of, of the S plane. So this is this is our S plane, and this is right hand side. And left hand side. So for stability, we want roots to be on this side. If we have roots on this side, then it means automatically that system is not stable. So how do we set how do we set this uh, table? So once you have a characteristic equation in terms of a polynomial, so maybe you have four s cubed plus s squared plus maybe 4s plus 1 plus 1 sorry is equals to 0 so if you have something like this what it says is that arrange all coefficient in two rows so you'll pick first one you pick this you pick first one skip go to next so here I'll say s cubed because the highest is s cubed and then s squared s1 zero. So what I'll do once I've arranged in descending order, so I'll pick first coefficient for here, skip, go to next, which is four again, and then go to second row which is one skip that we have one so basically what he's saying is that 
arrange all coefficients in two rows. So you start with this, which is that one. You skip that, A1. You go to A2, which is that. You skip A3, you go to A4, which is that one. And then you go to A1, skip A3, A5. Is that okay? Yes. So once you have you have these two rows from the original from the from your characteristic equation, then you you, you set up another another row, a third row, which is b1, b2, and b3. So b1, b1, b2, and b3, you can actually find those by using this formula. Mm -hmm. If you look at this, you see A1 times A2 minus A0 A times A3 divided by A1. So you have this. I want this B1. So I take that. A1, A2, which is that. And then A0, A3, which is that. So it's like you're having a figure A. So you have A1, A2, that, and then A0, A3, that, and then you divide with this, this value, and you get your B, B1. For B2, yeah, so you have another big figure A8, A1, A4, and then A0, A5 like that, divide by A1. So you proceed uh, that way, forming rows. Uh, forming rows, like in here, C1, you go to, like that, B1, A3, and A1, B2. And then you divide by B here. For C2, like that. So B1, A5, A1, B3, divided by this. And you form this row. So you continue forming these uh, rows. That's how we, we make the uh, Ralph array and Ralph uh, table. So the number, how does this help us in determining stability of a system? So the number of sign changes in first column, this is the first column. Once you set up your table, so that is your first column. In first column is equals to the number of poles in the right hand, in the right half plane. So the sign changes in this column, it means those are actually the number of the number of roots on the right hand side of the plane. If we have a uh, all these uh, uh, in the first column, all the coefficients are actually of the same sign. They are all positive or all negative. Then it means there are no roots on right hand side of the plane. So it means the system is stable. In particular, this means that the system is stable if there, there is no sign change in the first column. So example, we have this, this example s to the power of six plus plus that that and that so what we do we write s to the power of six here is power five four three sorry two one and zero so you pick first one coefficient is what one right one, skip this, next is two, skip that, next is five, skip that, next is 20. So the remaining is three, nine, and, and 12. So for us to, to fill this 
this row, we use that figure eight thing. So six times, uh, three times two, six. And then one times nine, nine. You divide by, by three. So six minus nine is minus, minus three, minus three divided by minus three is minus, minus one. So once you follow those, uh, that procedure, you will end up with one minus one, 120, 12, 72, 7, 20, 37.71, 20, uh, and last one is 20. Note that we have 20, 20, 20, 20, which is similar to the last uh, coefficient, the constant term. So always your last value here should be the constant term. Okay. So once we, we, we develop our table and look at the uh, first, uh, first column, we see that after three, there is negative, negative one. So there is this sign change from positive to, to negative. So that is one, one root on right hand, on right half plane. And then again, from minus one, from negative here, it goes to positive. So we have two sign changes. So two sign changes, two sign changes here. From minus three, which is positive, uh, this should be minus one here. From, from three, positive three to minus one, and from, from minus one to, to, 12, to positive 12. So since there are two sign ch changes, it means we have two roots somewhere here on the right hand, uh, uh, on the right hand side of the S plane. So it means this system is not, is not stable. Okay. Anyone with a challenge there? I have a question from the first slide. Yes. How were we supposed to get B3? Should we? Uh, it is in this one, the one of obtaining B1, B2, B3. And this one. this one? Yes. How mm -hmm. are we supposed to calculate B3? B3, okay, mm -hmm. if you have, uh, if you have a long, a long, a long polynomial, then you'll have, uh, you'll have values uh, till here, like, like this example. You see this example, we have up to, up to 20, and then this is, uh, this is second row. So, so this is actually our B1, B2, and B3. So what we can do here, let's say we want to find this. So this is like our B3. So I say that one, minus 12, right? I think you're supposed to use the row on top. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you you do this. You have sixty, right? Is it sixty? Yes, yes. Sixty, and then here uh, there is nothing. So zero times one is zero minus zero, and then you divide by. You divide by this value, right? Three. Yes. So you have you have twenty as your B three. So, so. 
Yes. So, uh, once you, you do uh, a lot of problems with C examples, then this it's very, very easy uh, to formulate uh, this table. So, there's two special cases where, where uh, this table actually fails, as in you cannot proceed. So, one is when there is a zero coefficient in the first column, but the corresponding row has at least one than zero. What it means is, if uh, you, you are setting up your table and you end up with maybe this is a zero, and other, uh, other coefficient on the same row, uh, they are non-zero, then actually this, it will fail, as in you, you won't be able to, to get values below, down, below here. So there are, one, there are two cases. One, if you have a zero on, 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 a, on a row, and other elements on same row, they are non-zero, then that it will, it will fail. Another case is when you have a whole of this row, any row, zeros, as in you have this zero, that zero, and that zero. So in those two cases, actually, this table fails. And there are ways which we can actually do and proceed. So we'll talk about those, uh, those, those two cases and how to tackle them. So for first case, you can actually, uh, you can actually proceed or tackle them by using three methods. So you can either use this, that, or that. Most test, uh, test books, they'll show you this one. This is common one. So either you, rep you replace your characteristic equation with one over S. So each place where there is S, you replace with one over X. Or you multiply that characteristic equation with something S plus one on both sides, left and, and right. Obviously, from this and this, you'll get new a polynomial characteristic equation where you can, you can proceed now. Another method is to replace that zero with a small number, epsilon, and then after formulating all the, the, uh, the table till the last item, then you set this epsilon to zero. Uh, you'll see this in, 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 in a minute in terms of example. So this, this first case, actually you can proceed by using either of these three, three methods. As I said earlier, most test books, they use this third, uh, third method or approach. So for first method, let's say we have we have this equation, determine st the stability of equation that s to the power of 4, 2 s power 3 plus 2 s power 2 plus 4 s plus 3. So what we do, what normally I do, I mark this, I skip, mark that, I skip and mark that. Then I just know this is 1 here, so 1 here, this one there and three. So remaining is two, which is here, and and four. So when we are we are finding this, you see that two times two is four. One times four is four, which is zero. Divide by two is zero. So this value. So if I want to find this value, so I this times that is six. Zero times one is zero. Divide by two. Divide by two, we have three. So you can actually see this is the first special case. We have one zero on that row and the remaining values are actually uh, non-zero values. So what we can do is we replace for the first method, this approach, replace S with one over X. So this is how you can say 
1 over 1 over x power 4 plus 2 1 over s 1 over x power 3 like that so once you have that and then you 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 uh, you simplify you will end up with something like this so at the end you can actually change that x into s it doesn't matter and then uh, if you proceed you'll pick this three skip two skip one remaining is four and two so you have four and two when you complete, you'll have something like this. 3, 4, 0 0.5 minus 6 and 1. So it means this system is actually un unstable. Why? Because there are two, two roots on the right-hand side of the S-plane because of two sign changes from positive to negative and then from negative to positive. Is that okay? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you, first method, you just replace uh, S with 1 over X, and then you simplify, you'll get a new polynomial. Uh, from there, you'll form your table afresh. Uh, Another method, uh, as I said, is you multiply with so you have this, you have your, your original uh, characteristic equation. So this equation you multiply with, say, S plus 1. So you multiply S plus 1 into bracket. You multiply with this polynomial. You'll have, you'll have something like this, a new polynomial. From there, you can proceed. If you, you, you proceed, you'll also see that there are two sign changes. So it means the system is unstable because there are two roots on the right-hand side of this plane. So you just get your original characteristic equation. You multiply by S plus one, form a new uh, polynomial. And then from there, you, you create your table and, and get your coefficients. Most common one is this is this third method. So actually it fails here, you found a zero here. So what you can do using method three is replacing this, uh, this zero with a small number, say uh, epsilon. So you replace with a small number, epsilon, and then proceed. So when you are, you are proceeding, you say this times that is four minus six, that times that, divide by epsilon. So you have four, six over, you'll have something like this. And then, this times that is three with this uh, number, and then zero times epsilon. So you just have this times that, divide by that, you'll end up with three. Remember I said last coefficient always is a, is this constant. So you see this three, you have three, three, and three. So once you have this, then you say, you let epsilon goes to, to zero. So if this goes to zero, it means you'll have four minus infinity. You'll have four minus infinity. And four minus infinity is actually a, a negative, very small number, a negative infinity. So here we'll actually have a negative infinity. So it means it means there is a two sign changes 
from this epsilon which is positive to negative and then negative to to positive so, so. so for all three methods they produce same same results as in uh, the system is unstable and we have two poles on the right hand side so Yes. yes yes it's okay so remember that is special case one when one when we have one uh we have a zero on a row and remaining items on same row is they are actually none zero so what if this is zero and also that is zero a whole row is zero so what we can do is you substitute that zero row with the coefficient of the derivative of the auxiliary equation obtained from the above, from the previous row or above row. So what it's saying is if we have zero here and that is zero, so you get derivative, you get derivative of the auxiliary equation above it. So this is this is the zero row. Above it, we have that. So auxiliary equation is actually you can say a s. See this? This is two. And the next one is just a, a constant. So you, you take derivative of this, you'll have 4, 4s. Four so this is power 1. So power 1, power 1, you replace that with, with 4. So you have 4. And proceed. So, so. Uh, yes. And one thing you need to note is uh, auxiliary equation is always even. One, two auxiliary equations are actually the roots. Uh, the roots of auxiliary equation are actually the roots of original characteristic equation. So these roots, the roots here, let me say this is auxiliary equation. So if you were to find these roots, let's say x squared plus, it will be plus four. So you have s squared is equals to minus four. So s is actually plus or minus j two. So these are actually the roots of this equation. And they are all imaginary axes. So these roots, uh, these roots occur in pairs. So you have plus or minus. You can have a positive. So you have one here, maybe one here, and another on this side. Or you can have here. Or you can have others which are on this side, like this. So they are always occur in, in pairs. So once you have, uh, uh, let me just repeat myself. So once you have this root as that is a zero uh, a zero row, you take equation above it, which is auxiliary equation, and form it like this. Differentiate. What you get, you replace that uh, zero row with those coefficient of derivative of uh, auxiliary equation, as we did here. So you replace with four in this equation, and then continue forming the table as, as usual.
So from this example, we saw that we have one, three, two, four, and eight. So there are no, there are no negative uh, coefficients. But since, since one row, the whole of it is zero, we need to look at uh, the nature of those, uh, of those roots so that we can conclude or we can know stability of the system or nature of the, of the system. As, as I said here, it is observed that there is no sign change in the first column and thus there is no root on the right hand side. This also means that the roots of the auxiliary equation are on the j, j omega axis. So you set this to zero and then you find that. So S is actually plus or minus J2. So we have a root here and a root there. So it means this system is marginally stable with, with sustained oscillation. As in the oscillation, they go on like that because of this uh, omega value. And we know this axis is J omega, J omega. So if we equate with our value here, J2, then it means the omega, omega is actually two radians per second. That's how. Guys, are you okay? Yeah, yes. Okay. So what, what we have been doing is actually determining a system either stable or unstable. So we call that absolute stability. So we just know it, this is stable or not stable or marginally stable. But we don't know how the strength of that system is, as, as in the stability. So what we have been doing is actually absolute stability. Later on, we will we'll talk about relative stability of the, of the system. So actually the, the disadvantage of this method is that it only gives you absolute stability and does not indicate about strength of, of stability, meaning relative stability. And then another problem is that this characteristic equation must be in polynomial form. As in you have s to the power 5, s to the power 3, power 2 like that in a polynomial form. So these are the two challenges of, uh, of this method or this stability test. Later on, we'll talk about other methods, but today, uh, this, uh, this is the method I wanted to introduce. So more example is, you are told that a unity feedback control system is shown by open loop transfer factor. So you have that unity, it means HS is equals to, HS is equals to one. So characteristic equation of this is what? One plus, j h is equals to zero. So one plus this value, and we know h is equals to one. So once you have that, you'll have something like this. You multiply this denominator on up here, and this term, rearrange in terms of, sasa. So using route kit criteria, calculate the range of values of K for the system, for the system to be stable. So you, this is how we do it, you say power three, power two, power one, power zero. So I pick this one, skip, pick that, 21 plus K, and then goes, go to the next row. So I have 10 and 
13 k so if i want to get this i say that one my times that so 21 plus k so i have 10 21 plus k minus 13 k divided by 10 and we know this last one is actually 13k. So uh, calculate the range of values of k for the system to be stable. So what you can say is that for system to be stable, then it means all of these column, these values must be positive. As in, if this is positive, that is positive, then for this to be stable, then also this value to be it, it needs to be positive. So what you can do, you can say 13K should be greater than zero. So it means K should be greater than zero. That's one. And then you say, you take this, it will be 21 plus K minus, is it 1.3K? Hmm? Yes. Yeah, correct. This 10 and 10 will go, so we'll have that. And then this 13 divided by 10 is 1.3, 1.3K. This should be greater than zero. So you'll rearrange this and you'll find something like that. So for the system to be stable, K needs to be greater than zero, but less than 70. So. Yes. Uh, so. More, uh, I'll, next, next class, we discuss more, more of these uh, examples. I'll pick from uh, past papers. Uh, I know I've said like two or three. They are, they, are, they are actually good exam questions. And then also later we'll talk about root locus. Uh, root locus is actually a how, how to plot uh, position of the roots as a constant is, is changing. So uh, this is also uh, an, an interesting topic just like today uh it shows how 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 those poles are actually moving when we are changing uh, we are changing the game so that is what i wanted to present today if you have any question you can ask You can ask if you have any question. Excuse me, sir. Yes. In the in the first method of solving the special case, the first special case. Yes. Um, how did you simplify the the equation after after replacing s with one over x? because uh, I'm trying to do that, but. Uh, okay, first, 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 first value is one over s, one over x to the power of four, right? Right. Yes. 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 So it means you have one over x to the power of is it four to the yeah. power of four, mm -hmm. and then another one you'll have two over x, x to the power three. power of three, three like that, like that, like that. So, so yeah. what you can do is once you have all those uh, fractions, uh, yeah, you, you, the highest the highest power you have is x to the power of four, right? Mm. Now multiply each time by x to the power of four. Oh. So you'll have one, and then you see yeah, yeah, you yeah. see how x to the power of five is coming up. Mm. Yeah. Anyone else? And uh, 
I've noticed also there are so many people who uh, they didn't actually attempt that question I sent last time. So I know maybe it's because of supplementary, uh, but it's very important for you uh, to practice those questions. Uh, it's better you practice and you see how you stand so that we, we can help each other rather than you start, you start practicing <laughs> during exams. So, so. Yes. so if there is no question, then uh, we can we can we can log off and then also tomorrow we won't be able to meet i'll be having invigilation around nine and i know classes start at uh, around 10 11 is it 11 or 10 10 also i don't want to go uh, uh to tackle so many things because as uh, as someone said uh, some students are not around. I know I'll have to repeat this because it's very, very important that uh, we are on the same page with other students. So tomorrow uh, uh, we won't meet, but I'll, I'll, I'll send some questions for you to practice. They're not graded, but please uh, practice those questions. Also, I've, all, uh, I've, I've sent uh, notes uh, I think you have got notes and uh, slides for today. Sorry, I, I, I could not type these uh, notes because I'm, I'm, I'm busy. So next time, if I have time, uh, time, I'll actually type and send as PDF so that you can print them and, 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 have, and have them here. Another thing you should not, uh, just to remind you, uh, this recording you should not uh, Post anywhere, so it's it's only internal between new students. Uh, I hope that is okay. So, so. so let's meet next week. Okay. Okay.